Watinta wa fazi, watinti bogoto. You strike a woman, you strike a rock. Welcome back to episode two of Pat on Brands Dialogues, Flourishing Women's Edition. The Pat on Brands Dialogues are all about sharing heartful stories. Last week, we kicked off the series on a very high note with Mbumi and Yona Lisa. Be sure to check that out on our YouTube channel, Pat on Brands, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. This episode is proudly brought to you by Lerato Agency, which is an agency that crafts brands that people love. And it's also brought to you by MTN Plus, which is a network that is for the youth of Mzanzi. And it also respects women that are all about empowering themselves and also empowering others. If you want to sign up on MTN Plus, be sure to dial star 411 hash to get discounted at data office and also other benefits you know just to kick start off this conversation you know um tembi once again you know thank you so so much for making the time to actually join us today you know you can just start off now by just giving us a brief background about who you are and also tell us how you actually got the name of mosha gang's finest uh, hi fortune um... hi tembi Thank you for for having me, guys, uh, on the show. I know we're supposed to start early. Uh, I would love to apologize yes. uh, on my side <laughs> because of, of unseen instances. Um, my name is Tembe Katlana. I come from Matlaking. I was born and bred there. Um, I come from a family of three uh, siblings. So it's me, my brother, my and my two brothers. And I lived with my mom and dad. And growing up in Motlaking, I can't say it was tough, but it was like any other girl child or, or boy child for that matter who grows up in a community that has a uh, lack of resources, especially, you know, uh, looking at, at, at sports as a whole. Mm -hmm. You know, we we looked up at people like Abu Obama Nyesa, about Edward Mangail, about Eastern children, because they came from attacking and to see mm -hmm. them going out and then feathering their careers, you know, outside of a community that, you know, lacks a lot of opportunities to inspire the youth. I think it, it's something that also motivated me as a female footballer to want to want better for myself. And mm -hmm. I, I think the, the, the name Motlaking's finest just comes from the fact that I come from Motlaking, you know, uh, mm -hmm. After a very long time of, of not having a person that is young and inspiring the youth out there, I think that's where, you know, the people from Motlaking started saying Motlaking's finest because at mm -hmm. that time I, I had I had just made by my Banyana debut. I had just, you know, started my, my professional career with Houston Dash and, and going to other countries. Mm. Okay, this is so, so interesting. You know, um, I love the fact that you come from an area, you know, that doesn't have like a lot of resources. But I mean, look at you right now. I mean, you're an international player. You know, I think it's so, so inspiring, you know, to hear, you know, such story. And would you say that um, soccer has always been your passion? I mean, when did you start playing soccer? To be honest, I would be lying. I would be lying if I said soccer was my passion because a lot of people especially that watch football now. One thing you ask them about who Tembi is or one of my traits is speed. So growing up, I've, I've, I've always been an athlete at school. But mm -hmm. because of the energy that I had as a child, I would play any sports. I would want to be busy with anything, you know, because at some point I remember having a conversation with my mom and she was saying, Please, please choose what you want to do because we we can't understand what you want to do and we can't fully support you. You know, if there was athletics, I would be there. If there was gambo dance, I was there. If there was singing, I was there. You know, I I just had so much energy that I felt like mm -hmm. I'm needed somewhere. But at, at that at that age, you don't know where you are needed because everywhere you go, you, uh -huh. you know, you just feel so good. So I started off as as an athlete. I I was a long distance runner because I have so much endurance and I was a short distance runner as well. Uh, I was doing 200 and, and 100 meters. So in a very long time in primary school, I specialized in running 
And I got, I think, my first medal in running. And my parents thought I stole it because they've never seen me run before. So <laughs> I think um, for, for the longest time, I've been a runner. And I, I fell in love with football. And ever since, I've been a footballer. That is so interesting, you know. Um, you know when you said you've one getting one person that has been all over. I feel like that is actually me. You know, I mean, when I was in high school, I was just all over. You know, but I love the fact that you know, with my parents, I wouldn't say they didn't really care much about what I was doing, but they're one of those parents that just say, you know what, we trust you enough to make your own decisions. You know, but I've just been one person that has just been all over. You know, just trying to find that one thing that I really, really enjoy doing because I mean, there is so much that I enjoy doing. So I just do everything you know but yeah um the next question is you know flourishing means growing healthy and vigorously you know because of a conductive environment how would you depict your growth you know on and off the field you know what were the factors that actually contributed to your growth there, there are a lot of factors that contributed to my growth i come from humble humble be- beginnings you know like i say we had no opportunities and every time i, I wanted to play soccer or wanted to run you know, we would always get on buses, get on cars to go out there and look for opportunities. So for me, that that's the philosophy that I've had, that if I don't do something about getting out of Motlake to look for opportunities, I will always be stuck here. Because I was looking at the people that were a bit older than me, let's say about five years, who, who were good and, you know, didn't get enough opportunities because of, of the community that we grew in and they were still there. So for me to 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 be the person that I am, I I had to grow in character, you know, and in, in character is is also being sure of, you know, when I go here, I'm gonna be putting everything that I that that I, that I have, I'm gonna be sacrificing everything. And and I think it started at home when I was sixteen and I got my first scholarship to go to the high performance center, which is an academy for football players in in, in Pretoria uh, under tax board, which is University of of, uh, of Tax. And and for me, it was difficult because all my life, ever since I was born, I've always spent time in Motlaking. And for me to get such an opportunity, it came as a good opportunity because then I had to leave to go study in Pretoria, you know, and have mm-hmm. all the other things that, that I didn't have yeah. every day, the training, the nutritionist, mm. the gym, everything was, was being said for me, you know. And it was a matter of me deciding and having the pressure of my parents as well because they've, they've never supported me up to that point when mm. I got a scholarship because I've always felt but uh, sports is, I mean, football is, is for, for boys because in the communities that we go, you know, come from, women's mm. football is not as big as it is in mm. Europe. You know? True. And it's difficult for our parents to trust us and to believe that mm. there's opportunities in football and it was difficult for my parents for that matter to to say that we are letting you go out there to that school and and, and see what it can give you and I think that's where everything else changed you know because I knew that I'm making a decision of changing schools it's not easy mm. from a black school yeah. to a private school it's not easy the standard of education mm. is three four times yeah. higher than, <laughs> than what we get you know, and that's because it was a private school, they were like 20 is a lot, about 20 in a class if you guys were a lot uh, mm. a subject, but minimum would be about 15 or 10 in a class. So teachers knew everyone, they knew your standard, mm. they knew your progress. So for me, it was a huge transition and, and I had to come up, I had to show my character, I had to show that I'm strong, I'm willing to learn, I'm willing to go forward, you know in order for me to become a better player as well, because everything else was being said for me on the pitch. Yeah, you know what you just said right now, you know, it's just reminding me of something that you actually love saying, you know, you love saying everything depends on you. You know, in a world where a lot of people like making excuses whenever things don't go well for them, you know, how would you say, you know, that came about? I mean, you just telling yourself all the time, like, everything depends on you. Have you always been this independent person? Have you always been the strong person that is just positive? You know, tell us more about that. Yeah, I've, I've had a lot of energy. And I think that that is what sets me apart. You know, my I always make sure that 
everywhere I go, my, my energy is felt. Not in a matter of I know things or I'm better than anyone, but um, I, I have to be energetic for my own sake because I, I feel like if I'm holding myself back, then I won't fully e express myself. And my energy has been something that has set me apart from anything. You know, I go to training, I bring the energy. I'm with my friends, I bring the energy. You know, every time, in every every circumstances, I bring my energy. And having to go to the high performance center, I think this is where I got to interact a lot with myself because my parents were not there. You know, I had to take care of myself. But even though there was a mentor who was taking care of us, we had to do our laundry. We had to do our schoolwork. You know, everything depended on me. So I couldn't say mm. my parents had to help me for homework or my mentor had to do it. They treated us as professionals. So they know when it's six o'clock and you have to be in the gym, mm. you have to be there. It depends on you to go mm. to gym, to be early or to be late. You have to go to mm. school. It's up to you. Whatever yes. that you do, every single <laughs> decision is up to you. So you can choose to not go to school and it will lead to something else. You can choose to go to school and it still leads to something else. So whatever you sure. do, depends on you. And I think for the longest run, that has been my motto. Everything de oh. depends on you. I have homework and my friends want us to go out in university. It depends on me whether I choose sure. to go out or I choose to study oh, no. or... Do you understand? Because everything has consequences. You do good, mm. there's consequences. You do bad, there's mm. consequences. So at the end of the mm. day, all your choices depend on you. You know, coming to think of that, that's actually very, very powerful. That's a very powerful word. And I feel like, you know, to everyone that is watching right now, this is something that you need to note down. I mean, everything really depends on you as a person. If you really want to succeed, it depends on you. Are you going to put in your 110% or are you not going to put in the effort? You know, I think with a lot of people, they they don't really like putting in all the effort. You know, they like being spoon fed, which is something that is very bad and they don't realize it. You know, you you come as a person maybe from a from a disadvantaged background, you know, when there's not a lot of resources, you know, at home, give us la socola. And then you start using that as an excuse. I'm not going to succeed. No, I'm not going to be a doctor. No, I'm not going to be a soccer player. Just because of your circumstances. You know, for Gates and Hori, everything really depends on you. You know, are you going to now use the back, the kind of background that you come from as a motivation to tell yourself, thinking, I can actually change this. I can actually be the first person from my community or the first person from my family to actually go to university and, and succeed. You know, so really you know everything really depends on us as people you know i really really love that motto so much and you know you spoke again something about you know um getting women in sports not really taken seriously especially in our country you know what do you think is that one thing that can actually be done you know especially in our country you know just so that a lot of people can start you know taking it very seriously you know be it maybe people from the the soccer department or just people that want to be in sports yeah i mean there's a lot you have oh, okay. to, you have to consider you you understand uh, mm -hmm. for like you're saying we come from different backgrounds but most not even most many of us come from disadvantaged mm -hmm. background disadvantaged communities you know and it was the structure that was set for us i i don't want to bring the cut race here but we have to be honest and we have to realize that we are playing a game here you know uh and that game is called life so opportunities are there opportunities are everywhere you know mm. it, it's up to you to want to say i want to change the circumstances of my family i want to change the person that i am today if, if you look yourself in the mirror are you happy that uh, you guys have to fight over four slices of bread or you you guys have to share one cup of coffee. It really doesn't make sense. You understand? So at the end of the day, this is where you have to get ideas of the kind of life that, that you want for yourself. And and once you know where you want to go, it's going to require so much for, from you in terms of the discipline, in terms of the dedication and in terms of understanding. And it goes hand in hand with school because if you come from a poor background and you want to leave school at grade nine, do you have a plan? For me, if you have a plan that's going to help change the circumstances of your family, we, we have nothing to dispute about. 
You understand? Mm. Mm. But also we have to, to be realistic. If mm. you leave school to stay at home, what are you going to do at home? Because you're going to be that plus one that's adding more problem to the home or to the household for that matter. But if you keep on going at school, you can be motivated. Of course, we can argue a lot about the system of our, of, of, uh, our schools in South Africa. But at the end of the day, this is where opportunities are. For example, I, I look at myself of how I went to a, a sports school, which is the High Performance Center. From there, I went. From there, I went to study at UWC. From UWC, I went to become a professional. But in everything that I did, I was a student athlete. I was playing football, and I was play, uh, and I was I was a student. So going to school really helped me because it brought the opportunity of being a student and of being an athlete. So going to school is is important. If you have an opportunity, it's good to pursue the opportunity. But if not, go to school, learn something, because at the end of the day, you might need whatever that you learned at school to better mm. yourself in life. And I think, I mean, considering that, you know, I mean, sports is, I feel like it's also something that is very unpredictable. A lot can happen. You know, you can get injured, and then the next thing, your soccer career is over. Now imagine if you're the kind of person that just left school and just went for this passion or something that you really love doing. So it's always good to try and balance, I mean, balance things, you know. Yes, go follow your passion and go and do sports, but also try and be educated, you know, get the degree and know that, okay, not if sports doesn't work out or if I'm injured in the near future, then you know that, okay, you can stop this career. You're I mean, the soccer career and actually pursue something else, you know, and I think you just answered, you know, the, the other question, because the other question was how important is education to you? Because I mean, with chapter 16, you speak about, you know, um, books and books and boots and you also, I mean, your experience at TUT and also UWC, you know, so maybe you can just add on to that. But how important is education to you? Educate, ed education to me is is important. I highly recommend it. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. I would be lying if I said I am here because of all the hard work and everything. No. The fact that I chose to go to school, these opportunities came with going to school. You know, mm -hmm. we see how universities like TUT, like UJ, like UWC give out scholarships still to, mm. to think are good enough to join their team. So if you are not smart enough to get into university, how then will you acquire playing for, for a team like UWC? And that team mm. now is set apart from itself because they play in the Varsity Cup. That's another stage to showcase your talent. You have a chance mm. to go to the World Student Games, which is like the mini Olympics for, for universities. So there's a lot of opportunities that mm. can come with going to school. So if you say you don't want to go to school, yet you want to be a professional player, for me, it's, I don't know, it's a bit tricky because <laughs> you have to go to school until you're at a point where you say, hmm. this opportunity is good enough for me to, you know, leave everything that I've been doing. And then you are, you are clear on what you want to do at that point. And I think chapter 16 of my book clearly states that a lot of times, a lot of times, I had to choose between school and, book, uh, and books. Okay. I mean, school and books. And at, at this point, it was tricky because in 2014, I, I was doing my matric. I got my first call up to Banyana Banyana, and we know how demanding matric is. Believe mm. me, believe it or not, I went to matric for six months. But because of the commitment, I had to, you know, be out of school to join Banyana Banyana in camp. But when I was in camp, I knew there was time to play football. And when I come back, there's time for me to study. And that way I had a, a good balance because at the end of, of the year, I passed my metric with an average of 83% and I got wow. two distinctions. So for someone wow. that has, hasn't been at school, that wow. is great. That is great because no. I knew, I, knew I, I had to be committed to finishing metric. And not yeah. only for myself, but because of of the doubts that my parents had. That really if, if you play mm. football, you will leave school. But I had to show them that like, it's possible to do two things at the same time and still put the same energy and effort in it. And and later again, it happened, I think two years later in 2016, when I was doing my second year in UWC. I had to stop because that year was demanding. I had to stop my studies 
that year was demanding for me because Banyana Banyana had qualified to go to the Olympics. So I had to choose at this point which one is highly important yes. for me. Yes, school will always be there, but I needed school. But at that point, mm. going to the Olympics is a one life, one, uh, one a, a lifetime opportunity. opportunity. And I was only 20. You know, if I say no to going to the Olympics, I might, I don't know. I, I might never go to the Olympics again, you know. Mm. And, and for me, I think a lot of times going to school and taking up opportunities of being a footballer has always, you know, been up and down. <laughs> and finally, I think in 2018, when I got a, a really good offer from Houston Bash to be a professional athlete, I had to choose to leave school permanently and be a professional player permanently, you know. Mm. And I mean, those decisions are not easy because at the end of the day, you have to see where your energy is needed. And I felt like it was time for me to get out of the country and, and showcase mm. my talent. If I ever wanted to be a professional, I had to go in, into me making better decisions for myself. Lady, the reason why I've just been doing this and laughing, you know, as you're speaking is because in my university years, I had the same problem, you know. Like I said, there's so much that I do. I do pageants. Besides pageants, I also got, like, community prayers that I do at school. It's just a whole lot. They, like, there's a lot of things that I do. And I'll tend to get, like, a question that, Fortune, how do you manage to succeed in everything that you're doing? How do you actually... And I always tell people, get it's all about prioritizing, you know. I mean, mm -hmm. like you said, at some point, school was important, and then you had to say, okay, no, I'm not going to do this. I'm going to focus on school now. But at some point, your boots needed you more than your books. And you're like, okay, what? No, let me put this aside. You know, so I, I can actually really relate to what she's saying because at some point I thought like, oh my goodness, God, can't I just be a part-time student? Because now I can't go and attend this camp and I really, really want to go and attend this camp. But now I can't go because I've got exams, you know. But at least if maybe I was a part-time student, my schedule would have been a lot easier, you know. So it was all about now, fortune, what's important to you right now, you know. Yeah. Are you going to now attend this camp or this pageant or are you going to focus on school? But I'm glad that in everything that I did, you know, I managed, you know, at least now I have a degree and also with my pageant career, it's going well, you know, um, right now, I mean, one of the biggest pageants in South Africa, which is Miss Mamelodi Sundowns and with also my other stuff, you know, I feel like everything is just slowly but surely coming together, you know, so I think to everyone that is watching right now, you know, you need to really learn how to really prioritize. If there's a whole lot that you love doing, you know, try and go for it. But then again, prioritize, you know, if something is important to you, at that time, go for that one and put the other one aside, you know, try and balance as well, you know. And I also feel like it's important also to have, you know, the right support system, you know. Maybe you can also just tell us about that because, I mean, if you don't have the right support system, if you don't have the right friends, it, it's going to be tough, you know. This journey is really, really going to be tough because, I mean, imagine now, we you go you have to attend training, you know, come on at school. But now your friends are now nagging you say, Oh, let's go out. Okay, what am I going to choose now? Am I going to choose my friends? Am I going to choose soccer? Am I going to choose my books? You know, so how did you handle that? I mean, maybe there are like certain challenges that you had in terms of the people that were around you, or maybe the people that are still around you. How important is it for you to have the right people in your life in order for you to succeed in each and every single thing that you do? So in, in everything that I try to do, the number one thing uh, I, I, I remind myself of is stability. You know, uh, stability is everything. You, you need to be stable in, in everything that, that you do. So everything that that i did had to include being stable and mm -hmm. and stability is is difficult <laughs> i must say people I, I think a lot of people look at me and they, they think oh she's living her life she's doing everything no it's it's stability you tell yourself you do this and you stick to it even when there's a lot of circumstances or there's a lot of uh, anxiousness that comes with you making a decision stick to your decision that's you being stable mm. and mm. if you want to go to school i mean friends will always be there and if, if your friends really care about you they're going to let you go do whatever that is important to you because 
friendship is not about sitting like this face to face or partying or whatever sometimes friendship is hey let's hang out over the weekend because i'm available if i'm not available as my friend i expect you to understand that my life is my priority as much as you are my friend i will prioritize you but right now everything is about me and once i've gotten or or touched what i want to get then it will be clear because then at that point i will stop chasing i will have mm-hmm. been playing for atletico madrid then i would be in within the circles to know on sundays i'm free on mondays i have training and then mm. i do this and do that then mm. you can plan around your friends but i i see the generation that we live in our friends play so much so much of a big role in 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 our lives hence they always say oh you need to choose your friends wisely if you want friends they will always come that for mm. sure i know your personality will attract people for sure you know and and if you feel like you are not growing with your friends it's about time you prioritize yourself it's about mm. time you are stable it's about time you put yourself first because most of the mm. time you're like oh fortune is going there to miss uh, sundowns erike mokap you are helping fortune get closer to a dream what are you Wait, doing yeah. to get closer mm. to a dream you understand so as friends we need to be realistic okay fortune mm. you are going to miss sundowns today i'm available i can go with you but today or the next day i'm not available because i also have an interview i also have this mm. i i i want to write a cv i want to do this you know as as friends we have to be realistic and and help each other in within because for me mm. i feel like the world is changing so much and and so fast okay. and there's opportunities everywhere so if you mm. say your friends are there and you are happy following your friends around and your life is just stagnant you have to look yourself in the mirror and mm. and truly analyze and say what is it that i want because mm. fortune is doing this fortune is doing that and she has so many things that she's doing and why is she successful because she is prioritizing herself there you know so it's about time you look yourself in the mirror set some goals for yourself be strict be stable in in everything that you do then you will see a lot of progress coming your way yeah wow thank you so much you know thank you so much for sharing that and guys please don't forget that there is an awesome giveaway that is going to happen as soon as we're done with this chat but you just really need to just comment you know um let us know you know if you have any questions for Tembi or I you know please just comment them down below and after this live session we're just going to check through you know those comment i mean those i mean questions that you have and then she'll answer them you know guys and hey stand a chance you know to win um Tembi's book strike a rock you know only if i mean you comment you ask questions you engage with us there's going to be a question there's going to be ask and you just need to answer and i mean stand a chance to win that book or one of two samsung a31s so you really want to win that right you really want to win that so guys please really comment on all social media platforms using our hashtag which is hashtag #pob dialogues hashtag #mtn plus Hashtag #flourishing or additions i can't wait to read those questions and for tammy to answer them and you know just to continue this conversation my next question for tammy is you know the importance of mentorship you know she's just going to share more about it. how important is mentorship to her you know does she have a mentor or yeah i don't have someone that's mentoring me ngaso uh, pa in in my own way <laughs> and uh, i i like things to be like straight you know yeah. uh, because especially when i'm with my team or when i'm playing soccer i have like i want my mind to be there so if i have to talk to someone now and then i feel like it's it's not going to take up up my time but sometimes it, it is is difficult and and i mean for me and this is my my personal opinion for me mm-hmm. coming back from training and i have a session with someone to tell me how to live life or what to do how to guide me <sighs> for me I feel it's a lot is a lot for me personally so i prefer having people i work with you know um people who guide me now and then not necessarily be my mentor because i feel like that's too much work someone has to follow you around hey i don't yeah. like this i don't like that at the end of the day you like not living your life you know um but yeah i don't have a mentor because i prefer having 
so much time to myself so, so that I can be able to do a lot of things with my time. Hmm. Interesting. I think this is just one of the reasons why I also enjoyed having many time. I don't know if people are always asking me this question. Fortuna, how are you handling everything? I mean, who is helping you? I don't have it. I really don't have a mentor. Everyone that was watching, if you know me, I don't have a mentor. Like, I really don't have a mentor because I think it's it's difficult to actually find a person that can understand you, a person that is not going to dictate your life. Because I think the last thing that I want is a person telling me how to live my life. You know, mm -hmm. with all the girls that I mentor, I always just tell them, Gere, I'm not going to tell you how to live your life but I'm basically going to help you here and there. And I'm also just going to try and, you know, I wouldn't say I live my life because, I mean, I live my life the way that I live it because of other people, but this is just me, you know, but I try yeah. and use my life in a manner where a person that can actually learn from me, you know. So that's what I always tell them. Get it? I'm not going to say do this. I never do that to them. I never say do one, two, three, but I always try and just, live in such a manner that they can actually learn a thing or two from me and I'm, I'm thankful that at least they're learning but yeah. this thing and then try and detect your life no do this don't do that I feel like that is going to be a bit tricky for me because I know what I want and I know how I want to live my life but now yeah. if I'm going to talk to you about something you're going to say to me no do it in this way then it's a bit of tricky for me I'd rather go on YouTube and just follow my role models and say, okay, what did they say? Or just search about certain topics that I feel like I need to be, you know, educated in and stuff. So, yeah, yeah I'm just going to go to one of the questions that, you know, one of the viewers just asked us. So one of the questions is from an enthusiastic goth and it's from YouTube. How did you juggle struggling with food and having a decent um, diet for football? To be honest, these things they they come as as you get high in in football and successful. Mm -hmm. you know. <laughs> Playing in Moshake Ekaya, we didn't have all the salads and all. We had pop and meat. That's that mm. staple food. We get it eat to eat out, out of there. You know, there's no oh, mom, Barry, uh, we must have salads and no, you eat what you eat and your body's used to that. But I mean. Uh, there's a lot of things that are changing, you know, and, and so is your body for that matter. If I eat pop and meat every day, Monday to Sunday, it, it will affect me so bad, you know. Yeah. Because now, like, now the transition over the years that my body got used to eating healthy uh -huh. food, used to eating this and this, it's difficult to, to change. But, but at the start, you know, I was not even thinking about I have to eat salads and whatever. I ate what I had. Because at that time, uh -huh. that's, that's what I got from my parents. Yeah. You know? uh, and it helped me for the long run uh, to, to be able to play soccer. But once I started being a uh -huh. professional player and getting into a system of eating healthy food and having diets and whatever, I had to change. And it, it, it was difficult because then my body used to eat pop and meat every day. But now I have to change. So it took time for me to adjust. I can tell you, even when I go back to South Africa, I... The last time I was in South Africa with the national team, I had stomach cramps. I thought I was dying because of the transition mm. of food, mm. European food and, and food in South Africa. We eat so much spices. Uh, we want the chakalakas and whatever. And, mm. and Europe is just easy, you know, less salt or minimum and less sugar. Mm. Your body is used for a year. Imagine two years of I was in South Africa and I was just eating European food. So when I had to go to South Africa, I wanted to eat everything that I could put my hands on. But, mm. you know, the disadvantages were now my body was now being shocked on what is it that I'm eating, you know, trying to adjust. Mm. And yeah, it, it was not an easy journey because that week was really terrible. <laughs> I'm so sorry about that. I'm so sorry about that. Yeah, I didn't know that it's so so important to actually keep up with like a strict a diet i think since all you really you've mentioned it tell us about your diet like in a week like what do you eat like in a week but or like there's yeah. no problem there's no diet you know I, I i hear people saying hey hey you must eat little or no i can tell you that over the years of of, of teams that i've played for we have nutritionists and these people say to us we need to eat four to five times a day so when you tell me about a diet it, it becomes difficult 
So yes, the trick in the four to five times a day, it's your breakfast. So it's your three big meals. It's your breakfast, it's your lunch, it's your dinner. And in between, you have to have your snacks. You understand? Uh -huh. So in South Africa, like, ah, I need like XA, I need lemon, and then in between, <laughs> in between you, are, you are stuck. That is why I, I never went, like, I'm on diet. No. I would rather say, I need to eat rice, and you keep your rice, and you fuck uh -huh. something else. You keep my eating, you fuck something else, but I still make sure. And one thing about me, I love food. I eat a lot. <laughs> because I run a lot, I have to replace everything that I lose. <laughs> I mean, who doesn't love food? Hi, people don't love food. I, I don't understand them, but it's okay. That's yeah, but cool. cool. yeah, cool. yeah. cool. yeah. yeah. What do you think needs to be done, you know, for women in sports to flourish? Especially Ooh. in South Africa. There's a lot. A lot. It's, yeah, let's I talk hear, about I, it. Yeah, yeah and see it. people's opinions on social media that it's about finances, it's about sponsors. For me, it's it's a, getting money and getting sponsors, that's the easiest thing that can be done for for, for, for women's sports in, in, in the country. What we need is now teaching our players discipline, dedication, hard work. Because at the end of the day, you can make so much money outside of being a professional player. In, in everything that you do. So for me, it's, it, it's a lot. There's a lot that needs to happen before we get to the financial part of it. You know, are your players disciplined enough to attract sponsors? Are your players w working hard enough to be at the top to attract sponsors? Because whatever that you do, at the end of the day, we have to go out and attract sponsors. But sponsors, of course, they want, you, you look at, example of Messi, uh, Neymar, and Ronaldo. They want people who perform so that they can be able to bet on them. So with sponsoring, it's it's betting. Do you understand? We can make an example with Mamilo de Sundowns. They, they have the players that they have because they know that they want to win Champions League. They want to win the league. They want to win that. And through them acquiring those players, sponsors come. Why? They like the kind of players that Mamilo de Sundowns has acquired. Mm people with discipline, they want people who are going to uh -huh. represent the, the brand. Because once I, I signed for Atlético Madrid, it's no longer Tembi Khatlana, it's Tembi Khatlana, the Atlético Madrid player. Uh -huh. Khatlana, the Banyana Banyana player. So imagine me going out, holding a Savannah, wherever. When people post on social media, they don't say Tembi Khatlana. It's no longer about uh -huh. me, but it's about the people that I work with, the people that I associate myself with. And for me, that's the huge thing that we need to be teaching women in sports about right now in the country because I feel like once we can we can work on, on making sure that that aspect is good, then we are able to attract any sponsor to be able to improve the game financially. Hmm. Thank you so much. Um, we're about to wrap up. So I've got like one last question for Tembi and to everyone that is listening, don't forget to answer the question that we had so that you can win your the book. So I'm going to ask the question again. What's the name of Timby's book? And the first person that answer is going to score herself a signed copy from Timby Khatlane. And yeah, one last question for you, Timby. What's that one thing that you actually learned in South Africa that you took along with her? Something that no matter how far you get in life, you will never forget. Uh, I come from humble beginnings. <laughs> humble beginnings. And, and for me, that is what I carry with me everywhere I go because uh, things will change and uh, a, a lot of a lot of things will will still you know come things that I never used to get in in South Africa and mm -hmm. for me that that makes so much of, of of a difference in my life so the fact that I come from hum, humbling humbling beginnings uh, makes things to be so much easy to know that even if I play for a club as big as um, Atlantico Madrid, uh, I'm able to, to be humble and remember where I come from because mm. we get into these big teams, we get into these big uh, quarters, you know, we, we go to Europe and a lot in, in, in the moment can make us forget of where we come from and start adopting mm. things and cultures we don't know.
Thank you so much for sharing that with us. But most importantly, you know, thank you so, so much, you know, for really taking the time to actually be part of this conversation. I think a lot of people learn so much from you. I also learned, you know, a whole lot, you know, like what you said right now, you know, humble beginnings, never forgetting where you come from, you know, as a person, you know. And also the other thing, your modes was uh, something that I also feel like I'm just going to adopt. You know, everything really depends on you as a person, you know. Thank you. Thank you so, so much you know, for everything. And thank you again to, you know, the audience that we're watching, you know, thank you for being so patient with us, even though we had, you know, a bit of native technicalities, you know, thank you so much for the questions, for engaging with us on all social media platforms. And also thank you to Lerado Agency, you know, that made us possible and also to MTN Plus, you know, for making this conversation possible, you know, thank you for empowering, you know, women such as Tembi and everyone, you know, in South Africa to actually, you know, keep on hustling and actually making moves, you know, thank you so, so much. All right. So we've got a winner, you know, we've got a winner from Facebook and let us just do drum roll, drum roll quickly. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, Panga Sasan Dovu. You are the Strike a Rock winner. Okay, I'm gonna say yeah. You are a strike. Oh wow, that is actually nice. You are a Strike a Rock winner. <laughs> <laughs> you know that maybe doesn't make sense, but yeah. yeah, you are a winner of the signed copy. You know, from Tempe Katlan and Strike a Rock. I hope that you're going to, you know, enjoy and don't forget to also tag Tempe Katlan and, you know, share maybe a bit about the chapters that you're going to learn from her book. But yeah, thank you so, so much.